All right, guys, it's day two of the draft, and I kind of wanted to do a quick recap of uh, what happened last night um, in terms of the Bills draft pick in the first round, picking uh, Shaq Lawson, you know, because I was kind of on the fence about it, not because of his talent, but because I was thinking to myself, where are they going to, you know, plan on using him? And so I started thinking in terms of Doug Whaley's, um, you know, reputation as a scout and personnel guy, and then I started thinking of in terms of Rex's defense, his scheme, and, and things like that, and uh, it, it clicked for me. Uh, I'm not, maybe it clicked, you know, a lot quicker for you guys, but for me, I was trying to figure out where he would fit. And um, when I did hear that, you know, Whaley said he was he is an outside linebacker, he may be taking the place of Manny Lawson. I'm like, okay, well, he's kind of a tweener, so how does this work? But then, like I said, I, I thought about Doug Whaley's expertise and who he drafted when he was or helped draft when he was with Pittsburgh and um, you know the type of players that played in Rex's system that are similar to Sha Shaq Lawson and it kind of it made sense so I kind of want to go over that um, really quickly I'm going to be a little all over the place because I want to get this video out before um, tonight because basically this stuff also impacts who I think we're going to take in the second and third round tonight or maybe tomorrow for that matter so uh, first of all I wanted to go over you know Rex's defense years ago when um, Whaley was with the Steelers and when uh, Rex was with the Ravens and, and they did play more of a 3-4 defense and I remember Whaley saying that a few months ago that we're going to be playing more of a 3-4 and I didn't know if it was smoke or you know actually the truth uh, and I do think it's starting to ring true just based on the pick of Shaq Lawson and, uh, and you'll see why here in a second. Um, I did find some film on YouTube of the Ravens defense when they played more of a 3-4 and Shaq Lawson actually fit uh, and you'll see here it's uh, let me bring it up real quick and you'll see this is the Ravens defense from uh, 2005 and it's just cut-ups of different 3-4 looks that they used um, that year and I was trying to think of you know where is Shaq's gonna fit in that in this kind of scheme because I do think we're gonna be playing more of a, a three four with you know more of a traditional zero tech here, um, and I think Shaq would fit right around here as the Sam linebacker in this defense, um, you know that typically traveled with the strength of the formation of the tight end. Of course, in passing down, it's a little different because Rex. Um, schemes it a little differently with the rush linebacker and whatnot, but I do see him playing this type of role um, and I just want to go up to the tight tight clips because he's you'll see it, it'll be right around here where Shaq would be playing again it's more of a, an odd front of course and that, and that makes sense based on Whaley's comments so basically we'd have Shaq as an outside backer edge player um, and Hughes also as an edge player, depending on the formation that the offenses give us. You'll see him, he'd probably be right around here. And of course, like last year, we had Mario in a similar role, and he wasn't that good in coverage, so Rex was kind of limited on what he could he could scheme and use. So I think Lawson fits a little better. He, he actually can drop in coverage and played in a similar scheme. Um, to what Rex and, and the Bills run. So I think he's a better fit. And that was one thing they were talking about all offseason is getting guys that actually fit better. And, of course, this defense was really good back then. See, that'd probably be Shaq right there. And, of course, it, it, it works right to his strengths because he's a great uh, run defender. He, he knows how to set an edge. He does a really good job of stacking. So I could see him, you know, fitting that role um, in, in most situations. Uh, if the Bills are indeed going to play more of a 3-4. Uh, watch one more clip and then I'll kind of change gears here and uh, show you film on some other comparisons that I found on uh, on film. Again, it's it's rough. I, there's not much production behind this uh, because I didn't have much time. I wanted to get this out to you know you Bills fans because it's going to set up for tonight, I believe. Now watch one more clip here. All right, and so, I mean, I could see Shaq being here. Of course, he's to the weak side of this formation here. Um, but again, with the versatility of him, of Jerry Hughes, and the other defensive linemen that we have, I mean, any of these guys can be playing 
any number of positions. So I'll go ahead and bring up um, the film that I cut up. Bear with me one second. All right, hopefully it works correctly. All right, so what I did was try to find, obviously, Shaq Lawson's comps. Who do I think he resembles? And when you look back at the film, you look back at the draft history of not only you know Rex Ryan, but of Doug Whaley, he drafted some really good linebackers when they, he was in Pittsburgh. And I say he drafted, but he was a, a, a main contributor to scouting these players. You know, the Lawrence Timmons, the James Harrisons, the Lamar Woodleys. So when you look at these players, you'll see that they're very, very close and very similar to the type of player that Shaq Lawson is. And I think what Whaley sees in him. So on this play, you're going to see... Uh, Wrong clip. Sorry, that's me. There we go. All right. So on this play, Lamar Woodley is going to show you some really good bend, all right? He runs the hoop here, and Shaq Lawson has this. And I, the way I cut these clips up is I show you a clip of Woodley or Harrison, then I'm going to show you a clip of um, Shaq Lawson. So you'll see he does a really good job of... And Woodley was a former defensive end, if, if, if uh, my memory serves correct. You see him, he, nice bend and rip with his right arm there. Runs the hoop perfectly. Here's another play. He's coming around the corner. Running back slips. Makes a play on the ball. Sanchez has to get rid of it. Well, Shaq, again, offers the same. You see him right here. Same type of skills. Of course, he played, you know, at like a defensive end role in their defense. You'll see him right here. Runs hoop and rips right here. It's a great job. It's, he's very similar to Lamar Woodley. Actually, same, pretty much the same size and and uh, weight. And this is just another Woodley clip. It's coming off over here, off the right-hand side of the screen. See him bend. Look at that bend. That's perfect. He's got a slight rip under that arm of the tackle. And of course, affects the pass. Lawson uh, did the same thing here. You see him. He's coming obviously from the other side. He's playing you know, right defensive end over here to the, to the field. Uses his hand really well. There's that rip right through the, the tackle's left hand, left arm. And then he just runs the hoop. You'll see it again in full, uh, at full speed. Shaq Lawson has good power. I mean, it's obviously he was a defensive end, as was Woodley. And you'll see he, he can bull rush. I mean, he, it's versus a tight end, I understand. But he has power, and especially in those hands. You see him just bull rush right through that guy. I mean, he doesn't make the sack, but... It affects uh, the quarterback's timing. Here's another uh, clip of him showing that that bend and his ability to disengage from the blocker versus, uh, I believe, a running back here. But see, so he runs, he uh, reads pass, just disengages. So I really do think that Whaley and company are actually going to be playing a little more 3-4, more of the 3-4 under, as opposed to the you know the 4-3 under that we typically saw with Rex. I'm sure he's, he's gonna, still going to be multiple, don't get me wrong, but just based on who they drafted last night, I, I see more of a 3-4 look, and you see the spin move and ability he has as a pass rusher. He can be special. I mean, I know most of his plays were made in the backfield for tackles for loss and whatnot, but he does have that ability as a pass rusher, don't get me wrong. You'll see it in full speed. Shows a good, you know, a couple good counter moves there. He went from the, you know, the edge rush, the upfield rush with a rip and then spin. And he's really good at that spin move. He knows when to, you know, to pull it out. And in this game, I thought he, he got manhandled by Stanley. Stanley has over 35 inch arms. Lawson's in the 32 range, I think almost 33 and Stanley 
Stanley's athletic ability and length really got the best of Lawson, but Lawson had a few plays that were special too. So one of them is right here. You'll see the punch by Stanley. And with the spin move by Lawson here, creates pressure and actually causes a penalty. So it's a really good play. Now, of course, his strength, like I said earlier, is versus the run. And you'll see James Harrison, who I think is like probably almost 30 pounds less than Shaq Lawson. And he, he, I mean, he played with a lot of anger and still does for that matter. You'll see him set a nice edge here versus this uh, double tight look. He doesn't get reached. Keeps that outside shoulder free. Forces this running back back inside and makes the tackle. And you'll see it again here. This is a, a run to the weak side. Harrison's over here. Run to the weak side. Looks like a, an ISO weak. And he just disengages. Sorry about the clarity about of this film, but it is from 2009, I think 2011 or 12. Let's see, he disengages, makes a tackle. And, and this is the perfect play. Right here, Lawson, they're trying to get outside of him. He doesn't get reached, he stacks the lineman, and then just, or I think it's actually the tight end, stacks him, disengages as that running back cuts inside and just makes a tackle. Really good play. Speed again at full speed. All right, now he uses a spin move versus the run too. Uh, it's not that common, but on this play, third and goal, he's expecting pass, and the offense tries running a little, little shovel pass inside. But he does a good job of setting this tackle up. And when he does his spin move, it's really quick, and he does propel himself on this play off of that lineman to make the tackle and force fourth down. See it in real time. And he does, I mean, he has dropped in coverage before. I can't give you the stats off the top of my head, but uh, he does drop into coverage from time to time, and that's why he, is, uh, he, he fits a scheme because whether you're a, a, you know, a defensive end or an outside linebacker in Rex's scheme, you're going to have to drop into coverage. How many times? I mean, I think Mario dropped like almost 30 times, like 28 times last year. Uh, I, I could see them asking Lawson to do it a little more just because he, he is more than willing to, and... He, he's pretty. He's not bad at it. And you'll see here, Woodley carries a tight end up the seam. Do I think we'll be asking him to do that? No, I think we'll be asking him to be heads up on this guy and jam him, especially in our division. But you see Woodley opens up really well from a two-point. It is a pass and just carries him up the seam. Excuse me. Again, I don't expect them to ask Lawson to do that often. I think that'll be more of the rush linebacker um, you know, with Jerry Hughes, but it is something that he is able to do. And here it's, we're going to watch James Harrison on the right hand of the screen. You'll see him drop in the coverage, sees a crosser, jams him. You see it, he does get a really good piece of him. I mean, this is something Shaq would be really good at too. I and mean, with those strong hands, he's going to affect that tight end releasing off the line of scrimmage. So, I mean, that is a plus, and that's why I think with the Bills play that 3-4, that 3-4 under, and those kind of looks, two-gap looks, I think uh, Lawson will definitely uh, make a difference. Here's one more uh, pass coverage play by Harrison. You'll see how much ground he covers here, and keep this in mind because you'll see Shaq do it on the next play. Watch what he does. He reads, reads pass. He's getting to his flats. He's finding the threat that's leaking out of the backfield. And the quarterback ends up throwing it away. Well, you'll see on this play, Shaq's lined up as a defensive end here. And what he does is peel, peels off the rush and, and carries the running back up the field. I mean, that's special. That is something really special. If he's able to do that for us, he, he just opens up so many things for our defense. Because what Rex Ryan likes to do is put a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage, and then he bails a lot of these guys that are on the edge, as uh, you know, guys that have to cover swing routes or out and ups and stuff like that. So this will 
offer Rex Ryan some versatility in his uh, play calls. Here's another coverage play, two point stance, third and six. They're expecting a, a pretty quick pass versus the Irish. And what I love about this play is he's dropping. As soon as he drops, what does he do? He gets to his zone, right? And he's he's trying to read these, these route combinations here, all right? And he does get beat here on the curl route, but because they just run a little, uh, you know, a flat curl route. So this number two receiver is going to flat, and this guy's curling up right behind him. But you can see he's got the ability to gain depth in the in the zone, and I mean immediately he's reading trying to read routes. I mean as soon as he takes his eyes off the routes, looks at the QB, it's a really good timing route and the ball's released. So I mean obviously he can he can work on it, but he does that have that ability to drop into coverage, which I know Rex will love, and it's almost not even worth mentioning because he's that good versus the run. Um, near the line of scrimmage, but you'll see James Harrison is, is, is very much the same way. You see him run down the line of scrimmage, and as the ball's cutting back, he did lose his responsibilities here, but Harrison does a good job just changing direction, lowering that center of gravity, and making the tackle on the running back. And you'll see it here by Lawson, too. Does a great job of blowing this play up. Doesn't bite on this uh, outside zone run here. Stays with the quarterback. And I mean, Clemson had them, especially early in this game. I remember Clemson had Notre Dame totally, totally off balance because the Irish tried running the ball a lot and, and Clemson just had answers with their athletes. So it was another really good play near the line of scrimmage for Shaq Lawson. So that's basically the film cut-ups I have for Lawson. And how that leads into tonight is uh, I think it really sets up perfectly because when you think about the guys that are left uh, on, you know, in the second round, there's still some really good defensive line talent. And uh, as much as I'd like to wait on getting some more defensive line and maybe address different positions, whether it be receiver or a linebacker, I really think you got to take those defensive, one of those defensive tackles. And the reason is because right now, if we're, we're playing more of a 3-4 defense, let's think about it from who we have um, set up. All right, so we'll have Lawson on the outside. We'll have Hughes on the outside. Now, who's playing the five tech? All right, um, as of right now, it's probably Corbin Bryant and Kyle Williams and then Darius in the middle. We draft one of those defensive tackles, whether it be Jerron Reed, Chris Jones, Ashawn Robinson, any of those three. I'll, honestly, I'll take any of those three in the second round. They're probably all first-round talent, uh, but they also fit the 3-4 defense, and that's what's so exciting about you know seeing what they did as far as drafting uh, you know Lawson in the first round. If we draft one of those guys, not only does it make our defensive line better, because you could put either of those guys at a five tech, you can put either of those guys at the nose, or and they fit any of the schemes or, or, or looks that Rex Ryan wants to, you know, scheme up. So not only is it free up our, our you know interior, but it also frees up the edge rushers and it'll free up the most important players right in this defense. It's the linebackers. You know, if if you draft a Jerron Reed and you put him anywhere along that defensive line. And you add him to, you know, Kyle Williams, Darius, and then those edge rushers. It makes it very difficult for offenses to double team any of those guys. And most of all, it makes it very difficult for those guys, our offensive linemen, to get to the second level to eat, uh, to block our linebackers. And that's one of the issues that Preston Brown had last year is that, you know, he was so used to getting downhill that last year having to read um, the defensive linemen and their fits and run fits and whatnot that he had trouble um, you know reacting and so he was thinking he was thinking too much and and ended up uh, hurting us because then those linemen had just that much more time to get to the second level and and were able to you know block him or at least you know angle him off so I think taking any of these defensive linemen tonight would be fantastic their first round values 
and I think it would just open up our defense that much more. Um, and you could honestly, you know, commit six or seven guys uh, up front, and and it'll, it'll allow um, you know Rex Ryan to scheme and disguise coverages like he loves to do. So personally, I would like to see Chris Jones if he's there, um, but it just because he can play all of those positions better. I know he's a little lazy. He loafs a lot, but I think, you know, he projects the best to fit in this defense, whether it's a, you know, a nose tackle or a three tech or a five tech. He can play all of it and he fits um, uh, the, you know, typical Rex Ryan player because he, you know, is very similar to Mohamed Wilkerson. So I think tonight really sets up for the Bills if they were going to be playing 3 4 defense, which from the research I've done today, very quickly, I do think that's what they're going to be end up doing. And I think they have to go with one of these defensive linemen today. So uh, I hope that's the case uh, because when I was watching this, uh, these clips of the Ravens and um, the Steelers clips, I mean, it's old school football. And I mean, it's not that pound the rock mentality anymore. You know, the league is not like that. It's geared towards passing. That's why I think Chris Jones would fit the best because he can bring, you know, bring it in the run game versus the run and in the pass rush, um, you know, side of things. So I think he fits the best. But, I mean, Aishon has that upside still, you know. And Jerron Reed just, I mean, he's a plugger. I don't see him too much of a, a good five tech. I think he's a nose tackle. But, hey, even if you draft him, you put him inside, you put Darius at a five tech, either way, it's still going to create issues um you know for offenses so uh, i wanted to get this out real quick i uh, hope you appreciate it and uh enjoyed it and uh if you are looking for any of these clips let me know i can uh post it on the site and uh let's see how tonight goes i'm pretty excited these are my favorite rounds usually you know second day and early third day are the the best rounds in my eyes uh, but i like i said i, I was kind of iffy i didn't really understand where shack fit I do now. I, I mean, if Whaley's actually committed to this and um, and they want to play more 3-4, I think uh, that was a great pick, great value at 19. So, all right, enjoy the draft tonight, and uh, 